So good evening everyone, Kunal here again and we will be taking a look at a data structure problem, uh, a very basic one uh, using Raptor. So we will be creating a flowchart using Raptor for bubble sort. Now I, like I said earlier, I will be making an entire series on data structures, algorithms and dynamic programming. But just to get you started and just to give you a feel of what uh, this uh, entire series is going to be, we will not be using any programming language just yet. We will be doing all our logic building using Raptor and I know uh, there is no sequence in which I am putting out these videos right now but stay with me because I am going to put all uh, a lot of videos using Raptor so uh, about 60 70 odd programs is what I intend to do over over uh, the next uh, three to four months and along with that we will then be building our uh, data structures and uh, algorithms using a solid programming language like Java or Python and we will be also at the same time using our algorithms and our uh, learning of data structures to use. We will be solving quite a few problems using, uh, in which these, these algorithms are used. Uh, problems which are uh, generally called dynamic programming. So this 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 uh, series of videos is for students who are, who are trying to understand learn programming from ground zero. All right. So the example that I have chosen today is the simplest um, simplest uh, searching algorithm or rather sorting algorithm. And it's called bubble sort. The way it works is that given an array, you would want to sort the array in an ascending or a descending order. And the way we will do that is to use a concept of nested loop, which is basically a loop within a loop. And we will be comparing uh, each element in the array with the rest of the elements on its right hand side and we will be building logic and doing a sort of uh, swapping so to say. So we will be swapping uh, the two elements if we find that they are not in an ascending position, uh, uh, position. so for for example if if we want to sort our array ascendingly or in an ascending manner if we come across a condition where uh, the elements are not in an ascending order we will simply swap them and we will do that because as uh, we all know in bubble sort we have to uh, essentially uh, we have to uh, take each element in a, in the array and compare it with the rest of the elements so for doing that let's first ask the user to input an array and it's very simple how to input an array and I will be using Raptor so that we will be just building a flow chart and we'll be seeing how an array can be uh, gotten from the user, how we can use this array then to sort. All right. So let's begin. I will start with the input box and I want to, okay, I hadn't saved this file. So let me save it to, let me name it as all right i will begin with asking the user 
enter the size of the array. Now we need this because we want the user to give us the size. So it can be anything, whatever the user wants. And let's store this value in a variable called n. So we've asked the user to enter the size of the array and we've stored it in a variable called n. From here on, we will be running a loop and asking the user to enter each element of the array individually and we will be populating the array. And I'll show you how we can do that using Raptor. So, yeah. So to begin with, even before we start the loop, we need a variable i. We'll initialize it to 1. Remember, Raptor begins not with 0, but 1. I mean, arrays in Raptor begins with the uh, index set to 1 rather than 0, as you might find in other programming languages. So we'll start with i is 1. This is our initialization. We will select a loop. And we will give a condition where i is greater than n. And i will then basically start in inputting things in my array. So let's say the array name is ARR. So I am using the square brackets to specify the index. And and oh, I'm sorry, I can't use the assignment box here. I'll have to ask the user to input this. So I don't need this assignment box. So we'll ask the user to enter element in the array. And we will store it in ARR of i. Cool. So we have now the user who inputs the elements in this array and I will need one last step which is to increment the i, i plus 1. Cool. So this is how I will get my array from the user. So once my array is ready, the next step is to sort the array. And to sort the array, I will begin again with the reinitialization of i with 1. I will need i, of course, to traverse the array ARR, which got created previously. To traverse this array, I will need another variable called i. I will uh, set it again to 1. And... I will basically do the same things I did previously. So I will say, oh sorry, no, I don't want a comment here. I will say, i is greater than n. And I will also, let's do this step here only. Let's increment the i also, i plus 1. What I basically want to do is, and let me uh, let me okay put a comment here. So what I basically want to do is, if for a array, if the array of the, the element i or the element at position i is less than and let, this is for ascending arrays. So let's say we want to sort this array in an ascending order which basically means we begin with the smallest element and then the second smallest one and so on till we reach the end where we have the greatest element. So for an array, if the element at ith position, let's say, is greater than, not less than, because we want ascending, so is greater than, 
B array of say I plus one we will have to swap the values of array of i and array of i plus one so we'll have to swap these values then. right so to do that the first loop will traverse the array so it will begin from i is 1, so it will start with the first element of the array. But I want to compare this first element of the array with the rest of the elements. And to do that, I will have to run another loop. For which I will need another vari variable called j to run that loop just the way I ran the loop for the given array. So let's, let's take that j in an assignment box and initialize it to let's say one so i can i can i can put it here or here doesn't matter i mean i can put it here as well after the i condition is checked so you can put it anywhere so i will take a variable j and i am not going to begin with one because i don't want to start with the first element but i want to start from the element which comes exactly after the ith element which is i plus 1. So j begins with i plus 1. So if i is 1, I want to start checking from the second, second index. If i is 5, I want to start checking from the sixth index and so on. And then I will again rerun a loop here and I will say till j is greater than sorry j is greater than n so we will run this loop till j becomes greater than n if that condition is matched the inner loop is exited but the outer loop still runs and i can then increment my j here so j is set to j plus one so I have some structure ready now so remember I have a loop and a loop within this loop and every time j will be reinitialized to i plus 1 whatever the value of i is and now I just simply have to use a selection so I will use a selection box here and I will check if array of ERR of i is greater than ERR of j. If yes, if the left hand element is greater than the right hand element, I want to swap it because it has to be ascending. So I will do basically swap using a temp variable. I will set the value of say ERR of j or let's say err of i to temp then i will set the value of err of j to a to uh, temp so first before we do that err of i becomes err of j And this is I. Cool. So where did it go? Yeah. So J is. So we have assigned the value of uh, array, the, the the value of uh, the ith index to temp. Then we assign the jth value of the jth index to i, and finally we will assign the temp value to j. So this is a simple swap and don't worry if you don't understand how swapping works, I will create another Raptor video to explain that also. Just write to me in the comments if you want to 
uh, understand anything specifically we will keep creating this kind of videos all right so this is done and now uh, i will set arr of j So swapping happens and this continues and that's it done we have created a bubble sort basically written a logic for bubble sort this is the whole thing and I can check so for uh, getting an output I can again run a loop so I'll do i is 1 again reinitialize i to 1 run a loop i can give a condition i is greater than n and we want to see the output of the r of i so we see the output here or i can say value at you at ith index is value at the ith index is error of i all right, cool. So I have it and then finally I will have to increment the I also. And done. And now if I run this, let's test it with only a five elemental array. Let's say eight, three, seven, ten. Two, three, seven, eight, ten. Cool. I have sorted the array which was unordered, and now I have the output as a sorted array. So this is how bubble sort work, guys. This is the entire flowchart for bubble sort. It was a very simple program. We uh, this is not part of the data structure series that we will cover. I will be using a regular programming language with much more in-depth explanations to cover this entire data structure algorithm series, uh, which I believe a lot of students and uh, struggle to understand. Uh, I will try to make it as simple as possible with uh, as many examples as possible. So this is just uh, the precursor to what we will be doing. The reason I am putting out so many videos on Raptor is because I want uh, those of you who have not done any programming earlier to get a little understanding about how programming logic works. So guys, I hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.